Good morning, a very warm welcome to St Gregory's Minster for our Benefits Online service for the first Sunday in Lent. One of the first things we have to do in the service today is to admit our both church wardens. They were both elected in the autumn and uh, every time we've um, arranged to admit them there's been a lockdown. So we are going to record it for posterity as I admit Gordon and James to the office the ancient office of church warden. When admitted to office, church wardens are lay officers of the archbishop. You are to discharge your duties as are by law and custom assigned to you. You are to be foremost in your parish in representing the laity and in cooperating with the incumbent. You are to use your best endeavours by your own personal example and by your teaching to encourage the practice of true religion among those who live in your parish and to promote true unity and peace among them. Will you gladly and willingly serve Christ as you undertake the duties of the office of church warden for this year in the parish of Kirkdale? I will, with, with the help, help of God. God. We work together with the clergy and the whole people of God for the proclamation of the gospel in the Diocese of York. I will. I ask you now to make your declarations. I do solemnly and sincerely declare that I will faithfully and diligently perform the duties of the office church warden within the parish for which I am chosen, and that I will present to the bishop such matters or persons as to my knowledge should be presented. I admit you into the ancient and honourable office of church warden. Almighty God, it is by your grace alone that we are accepted and called to your service. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and make me worthy of this calling. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for calling Gordon and James to serve as your church wardens. By the power of your Holy Spirit, inspire them to fulfil their ministry for you and for your glory. Fill them with wisdom, faith and love. And may your blessing rest upon them now and always. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gordon and James, may God, who has called you to this ministry, give you the strength to do it for the glory of Christ and for the good of all in your parish. And may the Lord bless your going out and your coming in from this time forward and forevermore. Amen. May Christ inspire you to serve him with joy. Amen. Thanks be to God. All praise to his name. Brothers and sisters in Christ, since early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's passion and resurrection and prepared for this by a season of penitence and fasting. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the Gospel and so to grow in faith and devotion to our Lord. I invite you therefore in the name of the Church to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting and self-denial and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. The Collect for Purity Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God, 
with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. And the collect prayer for the first Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, fasted forty days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit. And as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the ninth chapter of the book of Genesis, beginning at the eighth verse. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you, and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring the clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of flesh, and the waters shall never become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Here ends the first lesson. Who's in the 
wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. On the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe on Catholic and Apostolic Church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This last year has felt like an extended Lent. Over the last 12 months we have given up much, and we have been living simpler lives. We have endeavoured to truly live love of neighbour, and we have a renewed awareness of the beauty of creation and the fragility of the ecological balance. We have spent time in reflection and prayer, and we have been reminded of the interconnectedness of the world, and we are especially aware of our mortality individually and in community. In the first lockdown, I was profoundly moved by the declaration that went viral we are all in the same storm, but not necessarily in the same boat. And we have all been lifted by the blossoming of rainbows absolutely everywhere. Shop windows, church notice boards, in hospitals, in the doctor's surgery. Wherever you go, there is usually a forest of rainbows. And the particular sense of thankfulness they convey to the NHS, our key workers and essential workers. In today's readings, especially the Old Testament reading from the book of Genesis, recalls the mud and rainbows of the last 12 months. When we come to mark all that the COVID pandemic has been, I wonder, could we commission a silhouette Noah's Ark and rainbow for every church? A little like the silhouette soldiers that so wonderfully and with beautifully crafted simplicity mark the 100th centenary of the end of the First World War and that so effectively capture, capture our thanksgiving sense of the sacrifice of so many for our freedoms and express our aching sadness and sense of loss. Whenever I cast the soldier silhouette at the Weldon Crossroads and the Benefice Roadside War Memorials with their poppy wreaths, I'm always stirred to pause and to remember. Lent is not tidy because it faces us with the effects of our brokenness, the effects of sin. This year, Lent begins with the timeless stories of floods, and therefore mud everywhere. The mud of temptation, the mud of our wild animals, and the mud of the wilderness. Water and wilderness go together, and the epistle links these robust stories of Noah's deliverance to the flood with baptism and deliverance from the power of sin. In Genesis, Noah picks up the pieces after the flood. Pictures of the devastation that floods wreck today come into mind. 
Destruction everywhere and the relentless clearing of debris. Close to home here in the Benefice when the Rye broke its bumps at Nuneaton, in York where the ooze spilled out across the city, across the UK, across the world. Noah's bird offering pleases God, but past experience indicates that rebellion will ensue. So God takes the initiative, launching into a speech. As for me, I will establish my covenant with you. And although a covenant requires agreement between two parties, God does not negotiate or consult Noah when setting the ground rules in an outlandishly generous manner, not just with Noah, but with all his descendants and every living creature. This part of the flood story describes how God took the initiative, spoke, and creation happened. And after the flood's devastation of the first creation, the same creator begins again with a universal, unilateral covenant. Salvation and blessing are entirely at God's initiative. As before, the charge is to be fruitful and multiply. But some things have changed. Now human sin is in the equation. The rest of creation will fear humans who can now eat not only plants but animals and murder has to be specifically prohibited. God promises never to destroy the earth again through a flood and gives the sign of the covenant, the bow in the clouds. We, in our 21st century context, immediately think of the rainbow, but in the Old Testament where battles involve bows and arrows, the word usually meant the bow of war. When the rainbow appeared, significantly it was not Noah, but God, who had the power to override the covenant and destroy the earth, who would remember the everlasting covenant. So the rainbow would remind God and reassure Noah that God had abandoned his bow of war. It would rain again. There would be thunder and lightning again. And when that happened, Noah might well be afraid that water would again destroy the earth. The sun, however, would shine again, sometimes shining when it was raining. Noah saw rainbows only when it rained, when what I dread has befallen me. Sometimes it is in the midst of what we dread rather than beforehand that we discover God's faithfulness much as we would like to avoid being in the situation in the first place. In today's Gospel reading, in Mark, Jesus, after he too has been immersed in water through baptism, is driven. Mark uses a strong word, and like Luke's more gentle, led into the wilderness. Jesus is driven to where the wild beasts roam, and Satan awaits him. For Jesus, just as for the people who Moses led through the Red Sea into the wilderness, there is no respite. Deliverance by God is followed by the testing of human trust in God in less favourable times. After the temptation in the wilderness, the sun came out, metaphorically for Jesus. Angels ministered to him. But then John was arrested. In Noah's language, it rained again. And what did Jesus do? Undeterred, he began preaching the good news of God's kingdom coming near again, acting as though he saw, in the midst of this cruel event of John's arrest, the rainbow of God's covenant. Lent is a time for dealing with the disorder in our lives, the mud that messes up God's world, addressing not just the effects, but the causes. Christian Aid alerts us this month in its newsletter of environmentally destructive practices that cause or exacerbate flooding across the world. And we can see locally the impact of our local rivers flooding. We are in the storm of COVID-19 and its aftermath. In addition to tending our own concerns, our Lenten disciplines might involve engagement with such hard, big issues that devastate people's lives. As Christians observing Lent, how can we get our hands dirty and clear the mud? We 
whether literal, metaphorical or spiritual, that ruins lives. At the same time, we follow Jesus' example and, undaunted by the recurrence of testing, proclaim God's good news. With God, there are rainbows. I wish you every blessing on your Lenten journey. Amen. Okay. After his baptism, Jesus is led by the Spirit into the wilderness before returning to proclaim God's kingdom. As we begin this season of Lent, let us move off into the desert to communicate with our God. Lord God, we come with all our muddled priorities and conflicting agendas to be made whole as the body of Christ, to renounce evil as so to be equipped to announce the kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we come with the world's clamour ringing in our ears, with comfort zones beckoning us, but the pain of injustice refusing to be shut out. We come for the world's healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we come with the demands of home, family, work and expectations, warring in us for space and attention. We come on behalf of those too busy or too exhausted to pray, that our daily lives may be washed in your peace, ordered in holiness and lit up with your joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Lord God, we come with the needs and sorrows, pain and suffering of our brothers and sisters all over the world who are aching, physically, emotionally or spiritually. We come to ask for your comfort and healing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we come to realign our lives in the context of your eternity and to commend to your love our own loved ones who have passed through earthly life to the life which has no ending. This week in our benefits we pray for the souls of Bernard Simpson and Margaret Keenan and we pray for their families as they mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear Lord God, we come with thankfulness for the gift of life and for the call to holiness. Give us the grace to respond to your calling. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandment of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. In the confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and weakness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy 
have promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Comfortable Words Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ said unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul said, this is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God, it is meet and right so to do. It is very meet and right and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our unrighteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather at the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we must humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receive in these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For in the same night that he is betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, 
which is given for you. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty and everlasting God, we must heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. And just to show us thereby thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs to hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be your honour and glory, world without end. Amen. And the blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.